Hey everyone, welcome to the second video of section 7.5. So in this video, we're going to take what we did last time, finding the general solution for a um, system of ODEs in, a, in one, of the, one of the three cases for the possible eigenvalues. And we're going to use that to draw phase portions for that system. Now this video is going to be pretty vague um, and pretty done in general, but I want to sort of hit all the bases here and sort of describe how you would do it. And the next video is going to have examples of doing that for specific cases so you can see how it looks in those individual cases. Let's go ahead and just get right into how do we draw these face portraits. All right, so how do we draw these guys? So what are we assuming? We're assuming we have an OD of this form, x prime equals ax, and a has two real distinct eigenvalues, r1, r2, with corresponding eigenvectors c1 and c2. And in the last video, we did all the work for this to show that if we have this case, then we know a general solution. Then the general solution is this. It's that formula right there. So now we want to draw a picture that sort of explains what's happening to all these solutions as time goes on and use the general solution and the basic stuff we have to sort of go from there. So the idea behind these is we can, there are two solutions we can draw really easily. We can draw the solution where C2 is zero and the solution where C1 is zero. We can draw those two out pretty easily, what they're going to do. And then we want to see to use a picture of what's there to fill in what's happening between them. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So step one, draw the straight line solutions. I'm going to try to keep this side by side. I'm scrolling up and down just to make sure we fit everything on here. So let me draw my axes here. So I have x1, x2. Now, I don't actually know what c1 and c2 are because I haven't given them numbers, but I can just pick them to be something, and then we'll draw the picture based on that and show you how you do it in specific examples in the next video. So let's say, well, I know the straight line solutions go in the directions of c1 and c2. So let's just say c1 is this way, and c2 is up this way. Now, for these guys, we also have to know which way they're going. So step two, draw arrows in the direction of time going forward. Now that might seem a little strange at first, but let me kind of explain what I mean. So say R1 is positive. Well, if R1 is positive, then as time goes on, the solution on this C1 line is going to keep getting further and further away from zero because it's a constant times that vector times a function of t. And the function of t is growing as time gets bigger. So this function is going to go away from zero as time goes on. If r2 is less than zero, then this one is going to go in towards zero as time goes on. Because along that line, r2t is going to get smaller and smaller closer to zero as time goes on, so it's going to pull it in towards the origin. Now step three, determine which part matters as t goes to infinity or t goes to minus infinity. Again, sounds kind of strange, but since r1 and r2 are different, one of them is bigger, right? And as time goes to infinity, the bigger one's gonna matter a lot more than the smaller one. On the other hand, as time goes to minus infinity, the smaller one matters more. So assume we're in the case here where we have r2 less than zero and r2 bigger than zero. Well, as t goes to infinity, the r2 term's going to zero, and the r1 term is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what's going to happen is every solution is going to come closer and closer to this C1 line as t goes to infinity because this term is the, the r2 term is going to vanish. This is going to go away as t goes to infinity. And this is going to get big as t goes to infinity. So like any solution that starts here, it's going to get in closer and closer to this line as t goes to infinity. And so are ones from down here. Now, on the other hand, as t goes to minus infinity, the opposite happens. Since r2 is negative, this is going to get big as t goes to minus infinity, and this goes to zero as t goes to minus infinity. So solutions, as they go to minus infinity, are going to go approach this line and go approach this line as t goes to minus infinity because the other part's vanishing, so it has to go approach that line. Basically, if there's one part that matters more and the other one's going to zero, your solution is going to go towards that line as it goes to infinity. And then step four on this phase part is just, is just fill in the curves. Fill in the curves 
with that information. So for instance, on a graph that looks like this, what I'm going to get is solutions that are going to go, they're going to come in on this line, they're going to bend over, and they're going to go off this way. So they're going this way as time goes on. Solutions here are doing things like this as time goes on. There's ones that are doing it up here, and things like that. So this more or less gives me, nope, that, that, those arrows are backwards. They have to approach the, the C1 line. So this should go this way, and this one here should be going this way. Everything approaches the C1 lines as T goes positive and approaches the C2 lines as T goes negative. So that may seem pretty vague and kind of roughly put together, but that's the idea. So draw in the straight lines because we know those are nice. We can draw them in right away and determine which way they're going as time goes on. Then determine which of these two solutions matters more as T goes to infinity or minus infinity because one of them is going to matter more on one end and the other one's going to matter on the opposite end because we have R1 R is not the same as R2, which means one of them has to matter more at the different points in time. And then use that information to sort of sketch curves to fill the plane. So this may have been a little weird, but in the next video, we're gonna do several examples of this, sort of figure out so you can see what this looks like and get an idea of what these pictures look like as you when you draw them for problems and things like that. All right, so that's it for this one. Um, I'm gonna throw one problem there for one thing for you guys to draw, drawing a face portrait. Um, again, if you wanna wait and look at the um, next video that has examples on it before you do that, that's probably a good idea. Um, but I'll put that up for you now, and then you can take a look at that and do that on the worksheet. All right, so it's the same problem you had in the last video for the last for finding general solutions. So use that if you want, um, and then draw a phase portrait for it using the information you have there. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one with some examples on solving and doing phase portraits.